without any presents. It's so dreadful to be poor. We have a mother, a father, and each other. We had a godfather. We won't for a long time. Maybe never. Oh, Joe. You know the reason Mother proposed us not having any Christmas presents this year? With the war making it so hard on everyone this winter, she thinks we shouldn't spend our money on pleasure. Since the men in the army are suffering so. Oh yes, it must be quite dreadful to be shot at, have to live in a tent and drink out of a tin mug. We have to, we can't do very much to help, but ought to do gladly what we can. But I'm afraid sometimes I don't. We've each got a dollar, and I don't think by that. Anything from you or Mark. But I would like to buy a new book for myself. I haven't bought a new book in ever so long. <laughs> Josephine, you're impossible. I plan to spend my dollar on new music. If only we have a nice piano. I shall get myself some new drawing pencils. I really need them. Look, Mommy is thinking about our money. So let's each get something for ourselves and have a little fun. We've worked hard enough for it anyway. I know, I do. Teaching those tarps and children all day long. At least you don't have to be a governess, Joe. Well, at least you don't have to spend all day shut up with fussy old women like Aunt Marge. Every time I find a new book to read, she starts calling her, Josephine, Josephine. And then I have to help her go wind yarn or wash a poodle. I don't believe any of you suffer as I do. And that you don't have to go to school and deal with impotent girls who laugh at your dresses and label your father as if he isn't rich. If you mean libels, then I say so, and not talk about labels with a top of our pickle bottle. I know what I meant, and you need to be stereotypical about it. It's proper to use elegant words and improve your vocab. You use such slang. Elegant words? I like good, strong words with meaning. Don't whistle, Joe. It's boyish. That's why I do it. I just got rude, unladylike girl, and I hate many penny little school children. Now, don't peck at one another. But Amy's always trying to be a still grown up. She needs to start wearing good clothes and on her nose to bed at night. My dad wouldn't be so flat and unaristocratic if you hadn't dropped me in the coat hog when I was little. No, Amy, birds have to agree or else I get pushed out. Now, Josephine. You are old enough to leave off boyish tricks and start behaving better. It was okay when you were younger, but now that you are tall and turn up your hair, you really must begin to start acting like a young lady. I am not a young lady, and if turning up my hair makes me one, I'll wear it in two braids till I'm 20. I hate to think I have to grow up and become all prim and proper. It's bad enough being a girl. I wish I were a boy. That way I can go to war and fight like Papa instead of becoming a pokey old woman like you. But Joe, father is chaplain of his regiment, and chaplains don't fight. But they don't get shot either. Joe, it's a shame, but it can't be helped. So, in the meantime, you must be content about having a boy's name like other people. And as for you, Amy, you are becoming altogether too prim in particular. I like your nice manners, but your absurd words are becoming almost as bad as Joe's slang. If you're not careful, you'll end up turning into an absurd little goose. Oh dear, I forgot my new slipper. Never mind, I'll get them. Oh look, there's Lori out riding on his new pony. That boy, a perfect cyclops, isn't he? Wow. Oh dear, you didn't even see that when he has both his eyes. I didn't say anything about his eyes, and I don't see why you fire up so just because I admire his riding. You need a centaur. Anyway, he's outside riding his pony right now. He is where? Lori, can I have that ride now? Joe, you mustn't shout so. Well, how else am I supposed to make him hear me? All right, I'll be right there. I'll be right back, Ned. Well, Joe certainly is persistent. I just hope he doesn't catch a cold going outside without her Sean bonnet. What would Marmy say? Don't scold her, Meg. You know she's been looking forward to riding the pony ever since Lori told her that he's getting one. Even people who ride horses usually leave the house at the door. I declare it was a sad day for Josephine's manners, the day the Lawrences moved in next door. You know that you were just as glad as any of us when the Lawrences moved into that big, huge old house next door. 
Marty was more than happy for us to share fun with a boy our own age since we don't have any brothers. And you know, Mr. Lawrence is one of Father's best friends. I just meant, oh, it must be so very lonely living in such a big house without a mother or a father to share it with. Just a grandfather and a tutor. I think it would be wonderful. Why, Amy? I mean, to have a tutor like Mr. Brooke and not have to go to school anymore. But Mr. Brooke is so old. He's at least 25. He's very dignified. And 25 isn't that old. <coughs> but Lori is only joking. I don't care. So I didn't mean it was the sad day the Lawrence's moved in next door. It's just even neighbors need to go jumping out windows at each other. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for the ride.